आपको सर सॉरी सर दूसरी मीटिंग से उठा के लाया हूँ मैं नहीं वो दूसरी मीटिंग चल रही थी और नेशनल इनोवेशन फाउंडेशन की बस डी साहब ज्वाइन हो ही रहे हैं वाज अंडर कंफ्यूजन एक्चुअली आज वो है ना सर हमारा समस्तीपुर पूसा का जरा डी साहब से कनेक्ट करो एक बार आज सर वो समस्तीपुर बिहार में कुछ कुछ नए भवन तैयार हुए हैं उनका शिलान्यास और लोकार्पण समारोह है तो उसके लिए प्रधानमंत्री वहाँ वर्चुअल मोड में करने वाले हैं तो उसके लिए 12 बजे प्रोग्राम वो है उसके कारण हम सारे दूसरे प्रोग्राम स्क्विच कर रहे हैं लेकिन ये इम्पोर्टेंट लेक्चर था इसको लिए इसके लिए हमने चेंज नहीं किया इसको इसको आज रहने दिया इसी समय पे पेपर इज कमिंग जस्ट कमिंग Good morning to all. On the occasion of seventh Dr. B. P. Girdayal Memorial Lecture, on behalf of Indian Society of Agro Physics and Division of Agricultural Physics, I cordially welcome the dignitaries among us, Honorable Dr. Sri Lochan Mahapatra Sir, Secretary Dayal, and Director General I. C. R. Today's speaker of seventh Dr. B. P. Girdayal Memorial Lecture. Padma Bhushan Dr R S Padoda sir former secretary there and director general ICR and chairman staff today's chief guest Dr S K Chaudhary sir DDG NRM and sir director Indian Agricultural Research Institute IRI Dr Pramila Krishnan madam head Division of Agricultural Physics (IARI), Madam Darshini Gildaya and their family, Vice Chancellors of various universities in India, and Thank you. 
ियल <laughs> Padma Bhushan, Dr. R. S. Paroda ji, former Secretary Day and Director General I. C. A. R. and Chairman Tas and today's Chief Guest, Dr. S. K. Chaudhary, D. D. G. N. R. M. and President of Indian Society of Agrophysics, Dr. A. K. Singh, Director Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi, Madam Gildiyal and family, registered participants of yesterday's webinar, and eminent scientists, esteemed audience, and my dear colleagues, I, Dr. P. Krishnan, Head Division of Agriculture Physics. Indian Agricultural Research Institute is giving a brief about the webinar on drone remote sensing in agriculture conducted yesterday the 9th of September 2020 this event was organized by the Indian Society of Agrophysics in association with the Division of Agricultural Physics IARI New Delhi the Indian Society of Agrophysics is a society of professionals working in the field of agricultural physics and allied disciplines the society in collaboration with the Division of Agricultural Physics IARI is organizing many events like lectures talks by eminent personalities with the main objective of promoting research education and training on application of physics in agriculture unmanned aerial vehicles like drones have the capacity to explore the unexplored regions to see the unseen to know the unknown fascinated by this potential of drone technology researchers all over the world are now looking forward to apply this technology in their areas of research including agriculture understanding the relevance of this drone technology on 9th of september 2020 indian society of agrophysics in association with the division of agriculture of physics iari conducted an one day webinar on drone remote sensing in agriculture over a virtual platform the call for this webinar was initiated during the second week of august 2020 with a target of 200 participants but we were overwhelmed with the response as the registration exceeded 200 within a week and we received lot of requests to extend the deadline and finally we could accommodate about 550 participants for this webinar the participants were from different length and breadth of our country including young learners like students to many senior researchers this showed the importance of our yesterday's webinar on drone remote sensing in agriculture the webinar covered various topics by eminent scientists for example professor n s raghava from delhi technology university delhi delivered a lecture on drone technology and overview dr shefali agarwal indian institute of remote sensing isro dehradun she delivered on drone image acquisition and processing dr ravi sahu from our division of agriculture physics gave a talk on drone remote sensing in precision agriculture and field phenotypy dr mark junet from the university of auckland new zealand gave a like lecture on drone remote sensing for crop loss assessment mr david bannon and dr carson roberts from headwall photonics usa gave a talk on airborne hyperspectral remote sensing thus the webinar covered various topics and the participants found the webinar to be very informative and useful in general with the norm of today to follow the social and physical distancing 
This kind of webinar gave the participants immense opportunity to enrich their knowledge. With the success of the webinar on drone remote sensing in agriculture conducted yesterday, the Society of Agrophysics is now looking forward to today's program on the 7th Gildian Memorial Lecture by our Honorable PG ICAR. With these few words, I finish my brief about today's function and also about the today's webinar. Thank you. May I now request uh, the, our president, Dr. S.K. Chaudhry, who is also the DDG NRM ICAR, to welcome and introduce Dr. B.B. Kiltaya Memorial Lecture. Good morning to all. Suprabhat, I welcome you all in this very, very important prestigious lecture instituted by Indian Society of Agriculture Physics and uh, most esteemed Padmushan Shri R.S. Parodaji, uh, who will be chairing today's session, and Dr. Thiruvachal Mahapadraji, who will be delivering today's important lecture. All of us, we are very eager to listen to him. And, uh, uh, many vice chancellors are there, Dr. A.K. Singh, Director IRI, my colleagues from ICR, State Agriculture Universities, and uh, the official members of Indian Society of Agrophysics, and uh, all the participants from all the corners of the country. I add my own words of welcoming you all in this very important lecture. Uh, before I speak something about uh, the Gildhal Memorial Lecture, I would very humbly and uh, very uh, uh, पूरे सम्मान के साथ अभिवादन करना चाहता हूं आज हमारे बीच में घिल्दयाल परिवार से श्रीमती दर्शनी घिल्दयाल जो कि डॉक्टर घिल्दयाल की पत्नी और उनके सुपुत्र हमारे पास साथ में जो उदित आदित्य नमित और मुदित ये चार उनके सुपुत्र भी हमारे साथ आज इस सभा में उपस्थित है मैं आप सब लोगों का हृदय से स्वागत करता हूं लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन डॉक्टर बी पी घिल्दयाल इज अ नेम very distinguished name in agricultural physics and soil physics arena in this country, not only in this country, but globally known for his contribution in basics and fundamentals of soil physics. Dr. Brijanandan Prashad Ghildiyal, who was born on 14th May 1927 in a distinguished family in Tehri, Garwar, Uttarakhand, he did his field degree from University of Allahabad, and for a long time he served the Pantanagar University GBPU 80. Subsequently, he went to Ford Foundation and at the end, he joined as a liaison office uh, of IRRI, uh, and he was there as a liaison scientist and uh, head also. He has made significant contribution to our understanding in soil physical environment and its impact on plant growth and development. Mostly the edific factors and its impact, how the basic properties of soil, intrinsic properties of soils are affected by the basic matrix of soil. And he has also made very uh, significant contribution in the All India Coordinated Research Project on Improvement of Soil Physical Properties. The, the project was there as well. What we call today is conservation agriculture. It was visualized by Dr. Gildeal during 1970s. Dr. Gildeal also edited and uh, authored several textbooks. One of his books is very, very common and very popular amongst the students of soil physics. Dr. Gildeal was a member of scientific panel and planning and development of review committees of ICR for so many years. And he was a recipient of many, many awards. And he was a blend of science and humanity both. He left for the heavenly abode on 27 February 2003. Uh, I would like to tell that uh, this society was formulated. He did immense efforts to institute an Indian Society of agro And in 1985, he was able to start this society. This society is instituted in Agriculture Physics Division of IERI and uh, in fond memory of Dr. Hildeal and his contribution and with the generous amount given by the Hildeal family, the society started the Professor Hildeal Memorial Lecture and this lecture is seventh in the series. The first lecture was delivered by uh, Dr. Uh, J.S.P. Yadav and then second lecture was uh, delivered by Dr. M.S. Swaminathan. Subsequently, uh, lectures were uh, delivered by Dr. Punjab Singh, and then Dr. L.S. Ratho, the DG IMD, then Dr. A.K. Sikha, the then DDG of NRM, and presently in the representative, and lastly by Santanu Chaudhary, director of IIT Jodhpur. Uh, on behalf of the Indian Society of Agrophysics and uh, on my own behalf, well, I would like to express gratitude and thanks to all the family members of uh, Professor Gildeal, and uh, 
uh, would like to uh, invite Dr. R. S. Varoda. And before that, uh, just uh, to introduce the chair, I would request uh, Dr. A. K. Singh because otherwise it will take time. Again, I will ask Pramila and all. So, Dr. A. K. Singh, please, uh, I request you to introduce the chair today. Thank you. Chair, although Thank you. it doesn't require any introduction. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary. Respected Dr. R. S. Varoda, Chairman, Trust for Advancement of Agriculture Sciences and chair of today's function, distinguished speaker of Dr. V.P. Gildial Memorial Lecture and secretary there and DEICR, Dr. Tulochan Mahapatra, president uh, Society for Agrophysics and DDJNRM, ICR, Dr. S.K. Chaudhary, Mrs. Gildial, members of Dr. Gildial's family, honored guests, students, ladies and gentlemen. I feel greatly honored and privileged in introducing Dr. Paroda to this August audience. Padmabhusan Dr. Rajan Singh Paroda was born on 28 August 1942 in Ajmer, Rajasthan. After doing his primary education from his native village and University of Rajasthan, University of Udaipur, he completed his PhD in genetics from IRI under guidance of an eminent geneticist, Dr. A.V. Joshi, and postdoctoral program from University of Wales at Brisbane, UK during 1968 to 70. He began his scientific journey as far as breeder and later served as director, uh, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, Deputy Director General of Crop Science, Regional Plant Production and Protection Officer at FAO, Secretary Dare and DGICR during 94 to 2001. And as Director General ICR and Secretary Dare, he brought modernization of Indian agriculture research and education system. As many as 30 new ICR institutes were established under his leadership. Dr. Parora, has served as president of Indian Science Congress, president National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, executive secretary of Ari, chairman of the Board of Trustees, chairman Haryana Farmers Commission. His intervention on GM issues in Honorable Supreme Court has helped the scientific community to continue its fight to promote research and development efforts on GM crops in India. Dr. Paroda has been conferred honorary DSC degree by 15 academic institutions including Ohio State University and Indian Agriculture Research Institute. Currently, he is serving as chairman task where he has brought out several policy papers, including a recent one on reorienting Indian agriculture, challenges and opportunities, published by CABI. This book covers journey from green to evergreen revolution, a must read publication. Dr. Paroda has received several prestigious awards for his outstanding contribution to agriculture research, education, policy reforms, and institution building, including Padma Bhushan, conferred on him in 1998. And the very recent recognition include Dr. M.S. Swaminathan Award and recognition as Biotech Food Heroes by Crop Life International. It is indeed a matter of great pleasure and satisfaction to me to introduce such a towering persona to the audience. I'm thankful to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable words. May I now uh, request uh, Dr. R.S. Paroda Ji, former day at DGICAR and Chairman Task to introduce today's speaker. Uh, thank you, first of all, uh, for the invitation to participate in this important memorial lecture in the name of uh, Dr. B.P. Gildial, whom I respect and with whom I had worked for many years and uh, whose enthusiasm, in fact, uh, supported the agriculture physics discipline in the country. Uh, today, the uh, main speaker, Dr. Tilochan Mahapatra, Director General ICR, Secretary Dayer, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, uh, DDG Norm, and also the president of the uh, Indian Society of Agriculture Physics, Dr. Ashok Singh, uh, Director IRI, members uh, of Gildial family, and especially Mrs. Gildial, uh, faculty members, uh, participants, uh, dear uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege uh, to uh, be here to listen to today's speaker for the seventh uh, uh, memorial uh, lecture in the name of Dr. B.P. Gildial. Uh, I 
uh, would like to also take this opportunity to congratulate uh, uh, not only uh, all the participants, but also uh, Dr. Krishnan for uh, having organized this event and uh, for having invited uh, Dr. Mahapatra to speak. Uh, he is well known to everyone. Again, uh, I have been guilty to introduce, introduce him, but I would not like to stand in between him and the, the uh, lecture that he has to deliver. But you all know that he is a, a well-known biotechnologist, his top career, uh, and worked for more than two and a half decades at the NRCPB, uh, working on prestigious uh, uh, programs like the Global uh, Rice Genome uh, Project, uh, in which he contributed greatly along with Dr. N.K. Singh. And uh, then later on, he contributed tremendously in the area of genomics, phenomics, bioprospecting, allele mining, and uh, uh, gene pyramiding. Uh, his uh, publications, large number of them, uh, speak for the quality of uh, research that he had conducted. And uh, also in the process, he uh, trained many young people and uh, a big school of young biotechnologists, which uh, we must recognize. He is uh, uh, well recognized for his contributions. He is a member of uh, National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, National Academy of uh, uh, Science in India, uh, called NASI, and uh, also he is now president of uh, NAS. Uh, beside that, he is uh, uh, also uh, serving on several international boards, including Borlaug Institute and uh, uh, also ERI, Biodiversity International, and Icarda. Uh, Dr. Tilochan Patra is a fine person. He is uh, always there to encourage young scientists and uh, uh, he has received uh, already doctorate degrees from a, a few important institutions and uh, he has received several awards, including Dr. Om Prakash Basin Award and many others. As I said, we are here to listen to him uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Mahapatra, I understand you have to also uh, attend another important meeting so you to kindly deliver uh, this important lecture. And uh, obviously I would also like to say that agriculture physics has contributed significantly uh, for the growth of Indian agriculture and uh, Dr. Gildial's contribution as a physicist and his uh, enthusiasm and commitment uh, for uh, promoting this discipline. Uh, I have not come across any other person uh, who can stand in comparison to him as far as India is concerned. So it's good that we remember Dr. Gildial and this lecture is being organized, and Dr. Mahapatra is going to speak uh, today. So, Dr. Mahapatra, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable words. Uh, before the start of today's uh, lecture, we'll have a small uh, floral tribute to Professor Gil. आपको मेरे पीए से थोड़ा बात कर दीजिए मैं अभी एक मीटिंग में हूँ मैं पीए थैंक यू वेरी मच मैं नाउ रिक्वेस्ट मैं मीटिंग में हूँ आपको मेरे पीए से बात करो ठीक है मैं नाउ रिक्वेस्ट हॉनरेबल बीजी डॉक्टर जुलाजी मापाकर सो सो थैंक यू वेरी मच जस्ट वन सेकंड There is uh, 
inauguration ceremony which is uh, going to be held uh, by honorable prime minister at 12 o'clock so some preparation going on so ye jo hai 98104 थैंक यू वेरी मच वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ईच वन ऑफ यू एंड वेरी स्पेसिफिकली रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर आर एस परोदा डॉक्टर ए के सिंह डायरेक्टर आई आर आई एंड डॉक्टर चौधरी प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द सोसाइटी एंड ऑल्सो माई कोलीग डेपुट डायरेक्टर जनरल नेचुरल रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट एज द आई सी आर हेडक्वार्टर्स देर आर सेवरल अदर डिग्नेटरीज एंड वेरी स्पेसिफिकली मैडम गिलदयाल मैडम दर्शनी गिलदयाल and uh, her family members who are present today uh, many others from uh, the society uh, agrophysics uh, society and also from iri uh, very uh, many thanks to all of you for coming together more than 350 participants are there uh, today as i see in the participation list uh at the outset let me thank uh, dr uh, uh, rs paroda sahab for uh, his kind words uh, i respect uh, you sir and uh, you have been our role model and uh, you have uh, shown uh, the path and you have uh, given us uh, the country uh, many things uh, i don't want to really count uh, each one of them very briefly your biodata was read but that's too brief to describe you uh, and we continue uh, getting leadership uh, from you ideas from you and support from you and directions from you and uh, we value it and this country needs them and we build programs based on your guidance suggestions so you have been our road model as i said and also you have been our guide uh, philosopher and also so friendly uh, to everyone Uh, that's a remarkable uh, kind of uh, personality of yours national level international level you have given so much and uh, uh, today uh, you are uh, chairing this session i didn't know uh, because i have been busy for past few days uh, in arranging the program today which is at 12 o'clock honorable prime minister we have a small inauguration but there are big programs on animal husbandry and fishery but our program is there for the rajendra prasad uh, central agriculture university Uh, so uh, all of you are requested to join at 12 o'clock uh, that particular program uh, so uh, uh, now uh, thanks to uh, dr uh, ak singh uh, uh, a valued colleague a friend and also uh, we have done uh, research together and that is what uh, it has been uh, you know uh, very uh, uh, strength of uh, uh, our uh, you know relationships Uh, uh more than that uh, an ardent uh, you know researcher uh, and a very involved uh, researcher and having deeper understanding uh, so thanks dr ak singh for organizing this particular program uh, and also thanks to my own uh, colleague dr sk choudhury for inviting me uh, to be part of this program uh, uh i am supposed to deliver this uh, memorial lecture and uh, which has been instituted uh, to uh, you know remember uh, professor uh, brijnandan prasad gildaya uh, you know an eminent uh, scientist particularly in the area of uh, agricultural physics uh, 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 not only as a teacher as a researcher uh, nationally and internationally uh, who founded Uh, indian society of agrophysics it's so obviously uh, you know not only that uh, he laid uh, the uh, particular stream uh, of uh, biological research and agricultural research but also uh, he provided leadership uh, in the form of 
having this particular society uh, to uh, work and promote research and education and other activities uh, in, in the area of uh, agrophysics. Uh, uh, so uh, it has been already described what uh, Dr. Gildal did and then uh, uh, how much uh, his contribution. So I don't want to really go into those uh, you know, specifics, but uh, I pay my tribute uh, to uh, this legendary scientist, uh, Dr. Gildal, uh, who uh, actually led in this particular area uh, and has shown the path uh, how and uh, uh, in what format agriculture physics uh, can sustain itself at that point in time as a subject. And uh, uh, in, a, in a larger context, bigger context, uh, how it can contribute uh, to uh, the uh, agricultural uh, research and development uh, by way of apl application of the principles, uh, which are very much uh, there uh, in the subject uh, agricultural physics. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, you know, Chaudhary, when uh, he was uh, requesting me that I should come and deliver this lecture, so I asked him, I am no way connected uh, to this subject and uh, how I, I, I would be befitting or I would be doing justice uh, to this lecture. And uh, that too, uh, you know, people, uh, uh, you know, persons like Dr. Prudha uh, being there, uh, you know, uh, a touring personality uh, chairing the session. So uh, he said that uh, we will give you some information and you can build uh, on that. So he has uh, provided some information on agricultural physics uh, and uh, certainly that will form, form my base. Uh, while, uh, you know, we were, uh, you know, discussing about the topic uh, of presentation, so uh, he suggested that it could be emerging areas uh, in agricultural physics. Uh, and, uh, you know, what are those areas that we should be, uh, you know, focusing on uh, and where things are happening and rapidly happening globally. And uh, so that uh, we, uh, as an organization, as a people, as a students, as teachers, uh, should take note of uh, and then uh, build on to that. Uh, but I will not be able to uh, give justice because I don't have actually enough understanding uh, in that area. But I'll try my best uh, to give uh, uh, some highlights of uh, whatever is happening uh, in this particular uh, aspect. Uh, physics uh, is uh, not really new uh, to uh, biology. As a students, uh, we, uh, you know, um, uh, were taught uh, how physics uh, was uh, in fact applied uh, to uh, solve various problems uh, in uh, you know, agriculture and biology. Uh, uh, so, so those uh, experiments which were done and the experiments which were done to solve these specific problems, they were in fact presented in the classrooms and we learned how they have been actually uh, used. Uh, you know, the, the best case uh, before us and for every one of us is solving the problem of DNA structure. And uh, DNA structure uh, would not have been deciphered uh, without the application of uh, physics. Uh, the, particularly the X-ray crystallography uh, as that was uh, used at that point in time and uh, you know, on the, uh, the people involved, I don't want to really uh, go into those uh, details. Uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Watson Creek model, as we know today, uh, of DNA structure, double helical structure of DNA. You know, how the physics principle applies uh, to this structure, uh, you know, on the biological uh, you know, uh, element, uh, the, the molecule. Uh, and how it follows that particular principle, you know, how bases are organized and in helical fashion, how repetition takes place and how many bases for one helix and all those details. And uh, without the uh, crystallographic images, you know, uh, visualizing those would have been uh, really difficult. And of course, uh, there were controversies, uh, you know, uh, particularly Rosalind Franklin's 
uh, X-ray and everybody in test books looks at those pictures and get enamored, uh, excited uh, by the kind of clean X-ray crystallographic picture of the double helical structure, which is actually interpreted, uh, inferred uh, from those, uh, you know, is actually given in textbooks today. And of course, uh, Dr. Wilkins, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, the way uh, those pictures of uh, Franklin were utilized uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Wilkin, uh, you know, benefited out of this and uh, partner in this Nobel Prize uh, that uh, Watson at Creek uh, uh, own and along with Wilkins. Uh, so so these, are, these are all part of history. I'll not go into those uh, uh, details, uh, you know, how things uh, really happen and what is that uh, we learned from that. But I think, uh, you know, it's not just that only one example, uh, you know, that in there are several structures of the proteins, uh, you know, on the, uh, you know, uh, beta carotene, carotene structure and then uh, alpha structure and, uh, you know, the way uh, the helices are there. So uh, I think uh, there are several examples uh, of uh, use of physical principles and techniques uh, those days uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, even the uh, principles uh, of uh, sedimentation, uh, which is uh, followed in uh, all the centrifugation processes. As students, you know, we used to use centrifugation, ultra centrifugation process uh, to uh, purify DNA. And today, uh, you don't really do that. Uh, you know, hundreds of samples going through the ultra centrifugation process to get the good quality DNA. And today you have kits and then you have all those, you know, ready-made things and you go much faster. And we used to spend days together, you know, 16 samples, eight samples at a time, uh, or, uh, you know, or then purification process again, you know, long procedures and day in and day out, we used to really work there. And again, there, if the sedimentation process, again, you apply the principle of, uh, you know, physics. And also when you try to see the DNA band, because you use uh, ethidium bromide and so on and so forth, uh, use uh, ultraviolet light. And then all these, uh, you know, involves the uh, principles of physics. And without understanding the principles of physics, uh, you know, any spectrophotometric measurements that we do, you know, uh, we only blindly follow uh, a particular protocol without understanding. And most often this happens and uh, uh, Dr. B.C. Panda, who is not in good health today, he used to teach us, you know, in biochemistry classes, you know, the spectrophotometric principles, the Beard Lambert's law, particularly, they were so nicely he used to explain, you know, how it really works. And uh, so, so those uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, teachings uh, in uh, fundamentals of some of these uh, physical, uh, you know, uh, principles, uh, are so useful to build uh, understanding uh, in uh, plant biology in general and agriculture uh, in particular. When we were in, uh, you know, if I have to go back in time, uh, you know, uh, at uh, OUAT, uh, Orissa University of Agriculture and Technology, uh, there was a, a brilliant scientist called uh, C.P. Misra, uh, Chakrapani Misra, uh, who uh, uh, now is a sannyasi. Uh, left everything uh, of the worldly things and then now he has become sannyasi. And uh, he used to teach those physical principles uh, with regard to soils. And, uh, you know, uh, he will start with uh, my India theta and uh, he will describe it as if he loves all those words and then uh, letters and make the class so interesting. A tall picture, figure and personality and a fantastic teacher and teaching the fundamentals of agricultural soil physics particularly, and then uh, the behavior of soil and water and physical characteristics of soil and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, that's uh, another, and Neva side meteorology we used to really study. And that understanding of four years of study uh, provided a broader understanding of uh, how physics is actually used uh, in many different areas of uh, agriculture. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and subsequent years that uh, become uh, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, prominent, particularly at the Indian Agriculture Research Institute. 
uh, and similarly, you know, during uh, you know my uh, PhD days, uh, you know, uh, I the, I was working on mustard. You know, I thought uh, you know rapidly if I can assess uh, the oil content of those recombinant inbred lines, and in fact, we map some of the uh, quantitative trait loci for oil content. And uh, Dr. Gambhir used to be there those days uh, in uh, in uh, agriculture physics division, and who used to handle the uh, nuclear uh, magnetic resonance, uh, you know, uh, method and the, the the equipment, NMR equipment, and he standardized the methods, and we used to really go and deliver the samples and get the results within no time. I'm still, it takes very little time, and uh, you know, you have non-destructive measurements of oil content using nuclear nuclear magnetic resonance, uh, you know, technology, and uh, so so that was uh, another example that uh, how, uh, you know, without again understanding much of, uh, you know, uh, the NMR uh, principles and, uh, you know, I had to study how it works. Otherwise, you know, using the technology doesn't really, you know, I didn't study. Otherwise, I was not exposed during teaching. But this is what is actually so important uh, to learn how these NMR uh, principles apply uh, to know the oil content and also moisture content in particular. Uh, and then, you know, uh, uh, use that in our research uh, and then application. And subsequently, uh, you know, how NMR is now, uh, you know, Anjali was working, Anjali Chatrat, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, root proliferation, early plant establishment and plant vigor and exposing those to NMR and all that, the seeds to NMR. I think, uh, you know, treatment of NMR and there could be many other things which are uh, not really discovered yet in biology and where the physics, uh, you know, physical principles can be uh, applied. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably, you know, on that is one area uh, we uh, may not really, uh, rather I feel uh, we have still inadequacies, uh, you know, uh, uh, prevalent there uh, in that particular uh, discipline. Uh, you know, uh, there are many such examples of my own encounter uh, with the subject. Uh, you know, uh, when, uh, you know, uh, as a researcher, we are doing uh, all these, uh, you know, of, uh, drought stress analysis and uh, the mutants we are handling, uh, Dr. A.K. Singh, Dr. Viswanathan, we are there in the project. And uh, we wanted to really understand the root structure and uh, uh, root analyzer. It appears very simple, but again, uh, you apply the principles of physics there uh, in scanning of roots understanding the mass, understanding the total volume, understanding the length, and all that, those details of results that we obtain uh, from a uh, scan analyzer, a uh, root analyzer, and that is another area uh, which, uh, you know, again, uh, very prominently and extensively used. Uh, and uh, leave aside those, I know, in fact, our own, uh, you know, microscopic principles, uh, you know, when you used to really uh, study in the intermediate in science, uh, the light chapter of physics, uh, you know, so much of uh, light principles were taught, uh, you know, to understand how the microscopes really work in the process. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, similarly, uh, the electron microscopy scanning and uh, transmission both uh, and the principles thereof. So one can keep describing that how, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, areas of uh, physics and physical laws and principles uh, can apply uh, to the uh, to biology. In subsequent years, we have confocal uh, microscopy and confocal microscopy. We have several equipments. Uh, maybe at least I know uh, you know one equipment at the National Research Center for Plant Biotechnology. We only know how to use them, but uh, a whole lot of principles. And today, I believe the teachers are teaching those uh, to the students. You know how confocal microscopy. Uh, can be elaborately applied uh, to understand, you know, biology. Uh, at the international level, uh, the way, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, these are all utilized. Even scanning uh, electron microscopy, uh, you know, understanding the seed uh, traits, uh, you know, uh, and then description of our varieties uh, based on the patterns on the surfaces. Uh, we don't really, we have not really used them uh, elaborately, uh, you know, even today. Uh, but there are, uh, you know, uh, you know, applications of these technologies uh, which are not new uh, but old ones, and uh, we studied as students, 
and applied some of them as a researcher, as a, as again uh, students, and subsequently, uh, you know, uh, in later years, uh, we uh, in fact uh, used in our own research. Uh, so uh, likewise, I can keep elaborating on uh, the you know kind of uh, you know areas uh, where uh, the uh, physical principles uh, can uh, you know apply. The time is running very fast. It's already 10:50. And uh, you know I have to really go fast. Uh, certainly, it's not just uh, you know these areas, uh, but in today's context, uh, as we see uh, that uh, we talk about uh, you know land degradation and desertification. When we talk of land degradation and desertification, again uh, in these uh, you know aspect, uh, the soil physical uh, principles uh, you know, and then. Uh, the water uh, principles uh, do apply because soil erosion uh, that applies that happens uh, and that leads to uh, the kind of degradation that we see and which has uh, several uh, international ramifications uh, and national uh, ramification and implications uh, because of uh, topsoil getting lost and uh, you know the productive areas are going barren uh, in uh, over a period of time. And our own study at uh, uh, the National Bureau of Soil Survey uh, has uh, clearly, uh, you know, uh, said that the southern India, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, is under uh, this, uh, you know, desertification uh, forces. Uh, so, uh, you know, understanding the soil erosion uh, nationally and globally, uh, and uh, you know, uh, particularly because of uh, forces of physical forces of uh, wind and water. Uh, so those, those two physical forces which work there, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, and understanding those dynamics, uh, you know, uh, uh, helps us uh, in uh, putting conservation measures appropriately in place. And, uh, you know, unless we understand those physical forces, uh, say, for instance, uh, wind erosion, uh, you know, uh, the speed of wind, uh, the uh, the uh, application, the resistance uh, factors which operate uh, in air and on, on the soil surface and so on and so forth, you know, uh, probably uh, they are uh, equally uh, important. And similarly, at the coastlines, in the coastal areas, the kind of, uh, you know, degradation that takes place due to water and particularly seawater and saline water. So chemistry, uh, in biology and physics all come together uh, in this uh, coastal ecosystem. And today we talk about ecosystem services and ecosystem services also has, uh, you know, a underlying physical principle and, uh, you know, applying to uh, biology there. And, uh, you know, that again uh, needs to be really uh, studied uh, in great uh, detail. Uh, and uh, uh, similarly, you know, there are several other aspects uh, we say uh, today, uh, you know, no tillage is the uh, best way to operate. And uh, gone are those days that you have to have summer plowing, we have to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, deep plowing and so on and so forth. And uh, the compaction of the soil, uh, the, the uh, density of the soil varying, uh, the bulk density and other physical properties, the porosity and all that, and what rolling capacity thereof. And, uh, you know, all that, that we study again, you know, uh, are, are now coming uh, uh, to the fore uh, that we don't require any tilling, uh, you know, uh, uh, and then uh, soil remains, uh, you know, until and, uh, you know, uh, the remains porous uh, and then the water, uh, you know, goes down, leaches down and uh, so on and so forth. It holds water and, uh, you know, a lot of other, uh, you know, uh, principles uh, you know, we apply in terms of biology as well and conservation agriculture practices, which are built around uh, those principles. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, the physical physics of that is yet to be actually studied and taught uh, to the students. Uh, what physics applies in conservation agriculture, no delays, and how much actually we teach today and how much we should really cover. And similarly, waterlogged areas, waterlogged areas, the anaerobic situation which it prevails, and the kind of uh, another, another anaerobic situation, the, the active biology uh, that works there, and the kind of gas exchange that takes place 
uh, you know, uh, through plants, without plants, uh, directly, and evapotranspiration process as such, uh, particularly the evaporation process. They are all biological, they are physical processes, and uh, they are so relevant. Uh, we have been using uh, evapotranspiration process to understand uh, the stresses uh, in case of plants. And, uh, you know, I can keep on talking about, and uh, certainly uh, the temperature uh, is another. And today we talk of greenhouse gas emissions and greenhouse gas emissions, uh, again, uh, there are physical principles there uh, which uh, apply so well. And, uh, you know, when I say all this, it's not just to describe, but to highlight that the agricultural physics, the physics in agriculture rather, uh, is uh, so crucial for us. Uh, you know, uh, there were days when we were students, uh, there was uh, uh, some equipments which were used uh, to uh, understand, uh, you know, uh, how plants, how plants uh, behave uh, with regard to, uh, you know, say photosynthesis uh, and uh, with regard to various other behavioral patterns uh, and, uh, you know, handheld equipments which are used. But today we use extensively the remote sensing uh, technologies. And today we use, we want to use, uh, you know, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles uh, to understand uh, our plants, their stress, their water content, soil moisture content, uh, and then, uh, you know, on the way they behave. And so those uh, technologies again apply the physical principles and the laws of physics. Uh, and, uh, you know, on, we talk of nanoscience. The nanoscience, again, is a big physical uh, you know, uh, chapter in physics. And uh, you talk of sensors today, and again, the sensors and imaging platforms which are being used extensively at the global level. Uh, they are all hardcore uh, physics. Uh, you know, biophysics I talked about, soil physics I talked about, and uh, the physics uh, of, uh, you know, on the environment, uh, whether it is through remote sensing uh, or through, uh, you know, uh, uh, our drones. Uh, so uh, there are several things there. I don't want, if I go there, that will take another half an hour to describe, you know, uh, how uh, we can, and time is running out and only five minutes left. And uh, so, uh, so these are all things which are happening. And similarly, to, you know, uh, while I was there, I initiated this program on phenomics. And, uh, you know, phenomics, uh, you know, entails a lot of uh, physical principles there. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the imaging platforms which have been put in place, uh, which we were discussing that time when we were discussing, Dr. Vishwanathan, myself, and Dr. Ravi Sahu, that uh, what all, uh, you know, imaging platforms we can, uh, you know, put in place. Uh, whether it is a uh, visible light uh, platform, whether it is fluorescence imaging, uh, or uh, even infrared imaging, uh, you know, uh, and similarly, uh, spectral imaging, you know, particularly the hyperspectral one, what Dr. Sahu uh, emphasized, that we must have this platform uh, through have, uh, to have, uh, you know, particularly uh, spectral radiometers he was already using. And uh, so using this, uh, we thought uh, using uh, and understanding the plant uh, phenotype, uh, you know, not only the physical structure of the plants, uh, how many tillers are there, how many panicles are there, how many grains per panicle one can actually, though it's not easy, uh, you know, uh, to understand that way, but based on certain criteria, one can derive that. And also understanding the biochemical properties out of that, the water content to start with a very simpler thing. And, uh, you know, uh, chlorophyll fluorescence, for instance, uh, to understand very many other things out of that. And 3D imaging, uh, you know, and uh, laser scanning, uh, you know, particularly uh, there are, I said, uh, root scanning and so on and so forth. And uh, magnetic resonance uh, imaging and CT scanning, uh, you know, uh, we use in human system. And uh, we thought of using X-ray uh, to have uh, root ar architecture studied uh, when the roots are still, uh, you know, in the uh, tubes. Uh, without uh, dismantling the plants, without um, disturbing the soil, at a different point in time, uh, one can uh, study the phenotype of the roots and their architecture. Uh, and similarly, uh, positron emission uh, detectors can also be used. Uh, PET scanning can also be used to uh, visualize the uh, metabolic uh, distribution, metabolite distributions and uh, transport uh, by using uh, uh, radionucleotides. So, so I believe that a whole lot of physical principles uh, today 
uh, are being used in imaging. And uh, you know, uh, how much we understand the physical principles, for instance, how much we are able to really teach our students. Uh, so, uh, so what is actually required? So all this is a global scenario and some of these things we have actually initiated in the country. What is actually required to strengthen, first of all, uh, this particular subject with appropriate uh, uh, course curriculum? And uh, I think that is very, very important. We have not really applied our mind so much to redesign, revisit and redesign the course curriculum. So that is so important in today's context, the way the uh, global uh, physics, agri-physics, uh, you know, development that we see all around. So that is number one. And the second one is that having appropriate teachers to teach this, it's not agri-physics, it's not just meteorology. And uh, we actually visualize at that some point in time, and there are resistance to continue. Actually, you know, uh, uh, physics as a subject uh, because there is a meteorology, and that is the subject in most of the universities. And uh, meteorology is only a small component of physics, as I described, and I didn't touch about uh, touch upon the meteorology, in fact. And uh, so we have to really see and uh, have teachers to really teach them. And we don't really have teachers in universities to teach this subject. And uh, we need so much. Uh, and uh, principles of electronics to be applied in, in plants uh, with regard to sensors, for instance. We don't have teachers to teach. So we need teachers to actually you know, teach all these uh, subjects. So we have to train teachers and build capacity of the teachers to start with. And if you can identify 10, 20 of them, and then uh, we will be able to build their capacities so that there will be uh, appropriate teaching happening, uh, not just uh, you know, in the field, but also through virtual realities and augmented realities. So I think this is what is actually required. And there are many other things uh, to talk about because the time is gone. So I have to stop here. And thank you very much, Dr. Chaudhary. You know, uh, I have several other points to talk about but I'm stopping. And uh, so without taking more time, and thank you, uh, Professor Poroda, for chairing this session. And thanks, Dr. Chaudhary and other colleagues from the society for giving me this opportunity. And uh, this is a wonderful subject. I loved physics in my intermediate in science. That was my best subject. And uh, I loved those uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of topics which are covered, which are taught by my teachers, whether it is thermodynamics, whether it is light, whether it is, we take a thing. You know, they're all, in fact, I secured maximum mark in physics during my intermediate in science. So I love the subject. So thank you very much. So uh, uh, take the webinar, webinar forward. Wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable words. Uh, in fact, you are given a rebirth to agricultural physics by reintroducing it in the ARS uh, discipline. Thank you, sir. And I assure you that uh, our faculty will definitely stand up to your uh, expectations and we will strengthen the program. May I now request uh, uh, Dr. S.K. Chaudhary, President, Indian Society of uh, Agrophysics and DDG NRM ICAR to give his remarks. Uh, of course, uh, 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 it is a tradition to invite the uh, remarks of the chairman first. So uh, I would request uh, Dr. Paroda, sir, uh, you are chairing the session, so because uh, the role of president will be coming later on. So I request uh, Dr. Paroda, sir, uh, for your kind remarks on the lecture. Dr. Paroda, sir. Sir, please unmute. Yeah, unmute, karna padega, sir. Unmute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, hello. Can yes, you sir. hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I understand Dr. Mahapatra has to attend an important meeting. And uh, obviously, as president of the society, you will be also concluding uh, the, the session. But uh, I would like to say that uh, we must thank uh, the speaker for having uh, addressed very important uh, issue relating to uh, you know, uh, use of uh, agricultural physics in agriculture. And uh, in, in various ways, uh, probably we are taking advantage of it, but uh, not recognizing it is an issue which would require uh, a, a kind of proactive role by the society uh, to be more aggressive 
in telling how agricultural physics is able to help uh, further in the growth of agricultural production and agricultural development. Uh, I don't want to repeat uh, many of those important uh, aspects which uh, Dr. Mahapatra indicated, uh, but definitely this is a science which has provided us leads to move forward whether it is relating to soil health and whether it is relating to also using various instruments for uh, quality analysis or whether it is uh, linked to water analysis or even soil health analysis. And in that respect, the issue of conservation agriculture has been very nicely brought out. This, this is the time that we try to be more uh, proactive to see how we can have this no-till uh, movement, which is already globally uh, being recognized and covering along around 180 million hectare area, mostly in drylands. We seem to have not captured this uh, opportunity. We have started doing it in irrigated area, areas under rice wheat for the conservation agriculture. But our dry lands are still 55%. And uh, uh, there you need the, the uh, no-till system. You need laser leveling, which has already picked up. And that is also based on physics. And more than 3.5 million hectare area. It's a silent revolution. And it helps in also water conservation, uh, saving of water. So there are many issues which are there and uh, I'm sure uh, we would be able to take this lead and uh, let me at this stage not uh, make it uh, longer. Uh, I wish we had more time, but uh, I, I, we understand the, 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 the compulsion on Dr. Mahapatra's time. I myself experienced these kinds of uh, exp uh, you know, uh, priorities which often comes in uh, despite of your commitment for uh, scientific uh, you know, purposes of this kind. But uh, then we have to still appreciate that he could spare time, could uh, uh, address this issue and highlighted the importance of agriculture, physics in agriculture. But we have to live with the time. He talked about nanotechnology. He talked also about uh, use of drones now in agriculture. It is artificial intelligence. It is the, the phenomics. Uh, th there are many areas in which uh, the, the physics is being used, but uh, how can uh, we make it integrated into the research programs so that uh, we are more uh, benefited in terms of the scientific outputs? So uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity for me to participate and listen to Dr. Mahapatra and uh, maybe understand more about agriculture physics uh, than probably what uh, we had been uh, earlier uh, realizing. But to know it from a biochemist is again uh, very uh, encouraging and satisfying. I would like to thank you, Dr. Chaudhary Thank uh, Dr. A.K. Singh, uh, especially for his very generous comments and uh, for hosting this event also. And also I would like to thank uh, the uh, organizers and the secretary and Dr. Krishnan uh, for inviting me to be a participant in this important lecture. In the name of Dr. Dilzi Al, I'm sure uh, his soul will be uh, very happy to see that uh, uh, agriculture physics for which he was all the time um, pleading or rather pleading and uh, uh, trying to make a case uh, is still being recognized and uh, is likely to continue playing important role for I would say uh, not the future green revolution but for sustaining the green revolutions. Thank you very much, Dr. Chaudhary.
Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable words. May I now request our president, Indian Society of Agrophysics, Dr. Shantri, to give his remarks. Thank you very much. Paroda sahab, bhoat bhoat dhanyavad. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, we are really fortunate that uh, you are here with us and you could uh, spare some time for us. And also, you made us uh, proud always, and we always feel proud on you. And uh, it is Padma Shri or Padma Bhushan, but otherwise you are the Bhushan of ICR, sir. Not only ICR, the whole SAU, sir. So with th these few words only, I can describe your whole personality. And uh, we are really uh, fortunate that the leaders like Dr. Paroda uh, has blazed the system of uh, uh, agricultural education, research, and extension in this country and shown the path. So thank you very much, sir. So ladies and gentlemen, all of you will agree uh, that uh, today, uh, Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra, although he was in hurry, uh, first, uh, I, I'm very much thankful to him that he has spared time in such a tight day that it was very difficult to spare even 10, 20 minutes for him. And secondly, he has covered almost all the dimensions of physics which are relevant for the coming future and that will lead the future research dimensions in agriculture physics, not only in agriculture physics, but all, also it will set the tone of uh, uh, future agriculture because everything will have a new normals now. Therefore, uh, we are not only passing through a tr transition, but also a transformation. Because the, 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 the new world is altogether different. A few months back, what we were doing and what we are doing presently, these two things are different. In our science also, in our research methodology, in protocols, everywhere this change is inevitable and we will have to go through this change. And this is what he was uh, pressing upon, that... These the physical transformations which took place in the past, in the, the history is uh, uh, witnessing that uh, these principles, they came abruptly and they modified the whole uh, gamut, not only agriculture, but a whole society. And that is why we call then the disruption, disruption in technology. And these disruptive technologies only will show the path in the future. So this is what the message in brief Dr. Mahapatra tried to give. The Indian Society of Agrophysics, though not a very old society, was formulated by Dr. Gildial in 1985 and slowly but confidently moving forward and try to deliver to the, all the aspects of soil physics, agrophysics, biophysics, or agrometrology, or you may name uh, And in this COVID situation, it was very difficult actually we planned a regular event on this date, this very date. 10th September was the date which was scheduled for the uh, normal convention of Indian Society of Agriculture and Physics. And this, we decided this in the month of December, last December. And uh, unfortunately, from March onwards, everything was locked down. And therefore, we also changed our strategy. But really, we wanted to continue with this lecture. So the, the society's executive body and all the members, they thought that it will be appropriate if we have this virtual event in the form of a memorial lecture of Dr. B.P. Gildayal. So that will be a befitting uh, commemoration and also will be a befitting activity of the society. So from that point of view, this event uh, was organized. Uh, sir, I would like to tell you that uh, yesterday, a uh, very important event was also organized by this society in association with the Agriculture Physics Division of IRI. And uh, it was a drone remote sensing. It was a kind of training, sir. It was not a big deliberation or it was not a big webinar, but it was a preliminary training to the young brains. And we tried to ignite and we tried to inspire them in the field of drone remote sensing use of unmanned aerial vehicle and also in the field of hyper hyperspectral remote sensing that we can use in the coming future. And these will be the techniques for transformations in agriculture in future. So uh, it was a very successful program. It was attended by almost uh, 650 or 700 participants were there all across the country. And uh, uh, three foreign uh, faculty members, resource persons, they delivered wonderful talk. And also we, have, we had experts from uh, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, and one expert from uh, here in Delhi, 
I think IIT or JNU somewhere. So it was a very wonderful program and our students, particularly the young students and young faculty members, they got a lot of uh, inspiration, information, and a lot of handy tools and handy ideas to go with the different aspects of drone and its use in various facets of agriculture. Not only agriculture physics, but overall, whether it is uh, risk management or risk assessment or damage assessment everywhere. Uh, so uh, now we uh, will plan our regular event in the month of uh, February if everything goes. Otherwise, next year, uh, uh, October or September, again, we'll have opportunity to uh, have the regular event of Indian Society of Agrophysics. Uh, I am once again uh, very much thankful uh, to all the participants who participated yesterday and we are going to give you the certificate uh, yesterday's participants we are going to give you certificates we wanted to display right in the beginning of this program but somehow because initially there was some uh, link failure with the Monica so that's why uh, we had to shift it but certainly those certificates will be reaching to you shortly and uh, many uh, our uh, participants, yesterday's participants, they are there on the uh, uh, live on YouTube link and they have already joined this program. They are listening to us and they are watching to us. So uh, as a president, uh, I'm really thankful to all of you for coming over here. My special thanks to all the members of Gildayal family, particularly Udit Gildayal, uh, then um, Udit Gildayal, Adit Gildayal, and uh, Uma Madam also joined, Uma Norial, uh, who is the niece of uh, Dr. Gildayal. Miss uh, Kaha, Unki Biti, he hai, who be a joint key hai, Nunabi Hamp chart me of ne wishes, Sablokli Dete, or Subsejada Abarme Production Karna Changa, Madam Darshini uh, Gildayal, Madam Jika, Yo Aji Hamper Mare Bipostite, Ham Apne Apko Sobhagi Shali, Samjengi Agar up, Ig Dominate Hamse Vartala Kare, uh, Madam Darshini Agar up. Uh, थोड़ा सा माइक खोल करके हमसे चर्चा कर सकते हैं हालांकि आप मेलबोर्न से जुड़े हुए हैं मुझे नहीं पता कि वो पॉसिबल हो पाएगा कि नहीं अगर संभव नहीं हो तो फिर आदित्य या कोई एक मेंबर गिल्डियल फैमिली से हमसे बात कर नो नो शी विल टॉक इफ यू कैन हियर मी ओ या या मुदित यस वेरी मच वेरी मच वेरी मच बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत अच्छा लगा आपने प्रोग्राम किया इसके लिए आपको धन्यवाद बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद आपके आशीर्वाद चाहिए आपके आशीर्वाद की आवश्यकता है सब लोगों को बिल्कुल आशीर्वाद है मेरे बहुत आशीर्वाद है आप लोगों के लिए सबके लिए थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच मुदित हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए थे मेलबोर्न से और इनके दो भाई आदित्य और उदित भी हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं अभी सब लोगों से बातचीत करना तो संभव नहीं लेकिन सारी गिल्दयाल फैमिली को मैं एक प्रेसिडेंट होने के नाते आप सबका बहुत-बहुत आभार व्यक्त करता हूं और इतने दूर से जुड़ने के लिए बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद भी देता हूं थैंक यू सो मच अमित और नमित भी जुड़े हैं सुनिया के साथ जी 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 अच्छा मुदीत उदित आदित्य नमित सारे लोग जुड़े हुए हैं धन्यवाद डॉक्टर कृष्ण मैडम टू यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू फॉर योर वैल्यूएबल रिमार्क्स एंड थैंक्स टू मैडम गिलदया फॉर जॉइनिंग टुडे एंड आल्सो गिविंग हर वेल विशेस टू आदित्य और फिजिक्स फैकल्टी May I now request the Secretary of Indian Society of Agrophysics, uh, Dr. Pragati Pramanik Maiti, to deliver the water prize. Pragati, unmute. Unmute, please. Good morning, everyone. Respected uh, uh, speaker, Dr. Chilajan Mahapatra sir, and uh, our chief guest, uh, Padma Bhusan, Dr. R.S. Pargaji, Dr. S.K. Chaudhary, President of the Society, and uh, Dr. A.K. Singh, Director, IARI, and all the invited guests and participants. Uh, on the occasion of 7th, Dr. B.P. Gillal Memorial Lecture in, in, uh, organized by the Indian Society of Agrophysics and hosted by Division of Agri uh, Agricultural Physics, it's my pleasure to spell out the vote of thanks. I take this opportunity to extend my sincere thanks to our esteemed ex speaker, Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra, Secretary Dear, and DG ICR to be present in this occasion and address the assembly. Sir, we always uh, look forward to listen to you. Uh, listen to you, and today very nicely you have emphasized the role of physics in agriculture in transforming uh, the agriculture 
in the new normals uh, sir we are very very much thankful for your kind enlightening words thank you very much sir i also extend my sincere thanks to padma bhushan dr rs paroda sir who have been kind enough to ex ex accept our invitation and managed to grace the occasion in spite of his busy schedule sir we are very much thankful for your kind and valuable remarks on this lecture thank you very much sir i would like to thank um, uh, dr s k choudhary president of the society and dbg nrm for your gracious presence and uh, for your gracious uh, pre presence sir you have been the event architect and you could organize the event uh, with your vision only we are grateful for making your vision into real reality thank you very much sir i take this opportunity to sincerely thank dr ak singh director iari sir you have been our intellectual mentor throughout the time sir we are very much thankful for making all the required facilities available to us for organizing this lecture thank you very much sir our sincere thanks and gratitude to dr pramila krishnan head division of agriculture physics madam you have been our inspiration we are truly obliged for your sincere uh, guidance and constant encouragement for making this event successful we are very much delighted to have madam gildal and other family members of dr bp gildal who have been kind enough to reciprocate our solicitation we extend our sincere thanks and gratitude we would like to thank dr rajesh sivarman to be instrumental in organizing the, this virtual event and make this endeavor a success thank you very much sir i now take this opportunity to extend my sincere thanks to all the ddgs icr directors of ir icr institute vice, vice chancellor of different agricultural universities officials of various international and national organization former head and professor of the division of agricultural physics our agricultural physics alumni executive council member of the society and other invited guests including participant for their gracious presence which has glorified the event to a new height last but not the least i extend my sincere thanks to all the scientists technical staff and our student of division of agriculture physics for their constant support not nonetheless i also extend my sincere thanks to dr rajiv and dr rajkumar for their constant support once again i reiterate my gratitude to all thank you very much sir thank you bahut acha laga thank you bahut bahut dhanyawad